What is server interactivity? So in the previous two videos, we have talked about enhanced navigation and enhanced form handling. And we were able to see that by using those two features, we are able to achieve interactivity. Our applications are actually interactive. But when Microsoft refer to server interactivity or server interactive, they actually mean something similar, but also different. So if we go back to enhanced navigation here, or even just go back to this diagram, we can see that the way to achieve interactivity is to use a JavaScript and work with the DOM. And then the JavaScript will work with the backend server. With enhanced navigation, we're using the blazor.web.js file to work with the server. So it's all about the JS file. The actual server interactivity is also relying on the blazor.web.js file, but this time the request and response is different. So let's copy this diagram and see how the server interactivity works here. So we have the same diagram, but here is different. Instead of using the blazor.web.js to send fetch API requests to the web server, Server interactivity is using the blazor.web.js file to set up a WebSocket channel, and that is called a SignalR channel. So let's use this bar here to represent the channel. And let's change the color to slightly like silverish. So what happens is that the first time when the page is rendered, there has to be a request and response going on here. So a HTTP request goes to the server, and then HTTP response comes back and that renders the DOM. That also makes the JavaScript file available inside the browser. And then immediately a WebSocket channel, which is the SignalR channel, is established between the browser and the server. When this SignalR channel is established on the web server here, let's remove the letters here, inside the server here, a in-memory representation of this page, let's use this rectangle to represent that, so a memory representation of this page is held inside the memory, right? And that is actually connected with the SignalR channel. So therefore, when the user interact with the DOM and when the blazor.web.js captures that interaction, messages, in this case is like actually binary messages, will be sent inside the SignalR channel, right? Like this. And here, when the in-memory representation of the page receives that message, it will interpret it and it will process that. And when the process is finished, binary message will come back through the channel and captured by the blazor.web.js file. Now, this JS file will interpret the binary message and then it will patch the DOM. So the difference between this and this is not only in how this communication is done, but also the backend is completely different. Right here, this is still a request and response model. The web server doesn't hold anything in memory. Every time a response comes, it will load objects into the memory and do the processing and then request comes back and everything will go out of memory, right? Another request comes in, objects will be created again, and then response goes back, the objects will be disposed again. Here, everything is held in memory. A SignalR channel is held consistently between the browser and the server, specifically the component or the component tree. And the communication method is using the SignalR channel and what is going on between the channel are actually binary messages. So the communication is pretty fast and the messages are made in a way that they are very efficient, very minimal. So therefore the performance is not bad. Now to make this part more clear and see at the backend how this all works together, I have to mention another concept, which is something called render tree. So in the DOM, we have the concept of render tree. Uh, all of the HTML elements are grouped together in a tree format. We have 
elements and then one element may have as a sub element so it looks like a tree in the back end when the in memory representation of this page is held inside the memory there is also a render tree that is held in the memory in fact there are two render trees let me use this diagram to represent the render tree let's say i use this component which represent this component and this component actually has two subcomponents, or in other words, two child components. And this is a tree. So this render tree, it was needs to be rendered inside the DOM eventually. But currently it's held in the memory. And this is what we call the previous render tree. And this previous tree is held in, in the memory. So after the user interact with the DOM, and then the blazer.web.js send a message to the component here. The component inside the memory process the request, and then it will generate another copy of the tree, which is a new copy. And the new copy of the render tree represents new information. So this is called new tree. Right? In this new tree, perhaps some information in the child components are updated, or perhaps another component is loaded like this. Now, Blazor is going to compare between these two render trees, and it will see the difference. In this case, obviously, there is an additional component added to the tree. So therefore, it's going to pack this component into binary message, and it will send this information to the blazor.web.js in the browser and the javascript file here and the stand that there's only this additional component is added then it will patch the dom with this additional component so what this is called is called render tree difference and that render tree difference is understood by the blazer.web.js and the js file updates the dom the user sees the difference now so that's the whole process that's how laser server interactivity works okay just to summarize when the page is just loaded, it's based on HTTP request and response model. And then the DOM gets all of the information, including the JS file. Immediately, the signal channel is established. And, and then when the user interacts with the DOM, the JS file send binary messages. The component inside the memory is going to capture that message, process that message, create add or remove information to the render tree and then it's going to compare between the previous render tree and the new render tree is going to see the difference it's going to get the div between the render tree and then it's going to only send that div not the whole tree back to the browser now the blazer.webjs captured that message and understand that message then it's going to patch the dom so therefore the page is partially re-rendered and that achieves the server interactivity that's everything I want to cover in this video. And in the next video, we're going to see how to actually enable server interactivity and how to use server interactivity to do a lot of things.